So the aim now is once we're signed in and we can see this form on our timeline view, we want to be able to type a status in here, click update, and that's store to our new statuses database table. We're not actually going to be displaying the statuses on this page at the moment because this timeline is a combination of our own statuses and our friend statuses as well. So we need to do something slightly different from that rather than just output a list of our own. So the first thing that we want to do then is create our status controller. So let's create a new file under controllers. And we'll save this out as status controller.php. And we'll go ahead and we'll copy over something like from home. In fact, we'll do it from our search controller. So we've got our request import in there. So we don't need a DB just yet. At least I don't think we do. And we're going to change this to status controller and we'll get rid of this method. So we now have our new controller. We need to implement our post status method. So this will be handling the validation and posting of a status. So I'm going to call that post status. We again have our request in here because we're dealing with uh, what we want to actually deal with our request data. And we need to create a route for this as well. So we can go ahead and update this too. So down here, let's create a new comment area and we'll just call this statuses. And this route is going to be a post route because we're actually posting a status through here. And we're just going to say status. We have an array here with our usual items and we can just copy and paste this again to save time and just update these. So it's now our status controller and it's get post. So this is our method just here or post status rather. Okay. So the name of this will be status dot post and we need to authenticate. So we need to know that we are completely authenticated here, which is obvious. And what we want to do is we want to return to our view. So under resources, views, timeline, index, we want to update our form action here to go through to that. So root status dot post. And we've got a placeholder, a uh, text area here with a placeholder, which we're going to change in a moment with a name of status. Let's just quickly change this now. Uh, this is going to be getting the user's first name. So all we need to do is say auth user get first name or username. And when we go and refresh here, it just says, what's up, Alex? This will be obviously the, the signed in user's name. When we hit update status, we see our token mismatch exception. So obviously in this form here, we just need to add our hidden input and we have our token and our value like we've seen with all the other forms that we've worked with, so that's session token. So now what we can do is hit update status and, uh, oh, okay, so get status does not exist. Uh, I think that was post status, wasn't it? Yeah, of course, you probably saw that. So once more, and when we hit update status, there we go. So we're through to the, uh, the that method now. So in this method, we need to validate. We need to make sure the status actually exists. So there's actually content in there. So we just do a normal validation. So this validate. Passing in our request. We have our array here and our status is required. And we want it to be, say, a max of a thousand. Obviously, as always, you can change this to whatever you want. So let's kill this here and say all OK again. And obviously, this isn't going to be all OK. If I click update status, we're redirected back with our errors. So we need to handle these in our uh, form here and show the validation errors. So once again, for the form group, we need to, if there is an error on this, so if errors has status, we want to output space and has error. And then otherwise, just an empty string. And then down here, we want our if statement, which is going to actually output the error that's happened. So we will check inside of errors to see if that status field has an error. And if that is the case, we have a span again with a help block. And we output our first error.
So errors first. Status, perfect. So now when I hit update status, we get this red and the status field is required. So that's all of our validation done. What we need to do now is actually create the status in the database. And this is fairly straightforward. What we don't have is a model for our statuses, which we need to create. And we don't have a relationship between our user and our statuses because a user can have many statuses. So we need to create our status model. So over in models, let's create a new file and let's call this status.php. And I'm going to, in fact, we'll do this from scratch. You can copy over the user one, but it contains probably more than we need. So we're going to namespace this under chatty models. The class is status. This extends the base model so we can work with eloquent and we need to import that as well. So we use illuminate database eloquent and model. And inside of here, we obviously need to define the table. Well, we don't need to do this, but in this case, uh, for the plural, we do. So statuses. And we need to also define the fillable fields. So fillable is an array. And in this case, it will be the body. So remember, we have that body in there. So what we need to do is we need to modify the user model to actually go ahead and uh, relate uh, basically relate this to a status. So let's go up where the rest of our relationships are. We'll put this just up here. So inside of our user model, a user can have many statuses. We're just going to create a method called statuses. This is going to return a has many relationship. So this has many. We define the full namespace of our model, which is chatty models status and we relate this the foreign key is user id so the foreign key here relates to the user's id okay so we now have the relationship for our statuses inside of status we need a relationship to relate this back to the user as well in case for a specific status we need to access user information which we will be doing so let's say public function user and we return this belongs to, so this status belongs to chatty models user. And again, the foreign key here is user ID. So there we go. We have uh, created our relationships. So that means that now in the status controller, we can easily create a status. We don't need to use the status model to do this. We can use the currently authenticated user to do this. So all we need to do is say auth user statuses, that's our relationship method, create. And this will automatically, when we insert this, it will automatically fill in the user ID for us. We don't need, all we need to do is uh, pass in the body. So the body we know, that comes from the form. So it's request input status. And then we can redirect the user back home and say your status has been posted. So let's re return a redirect to the home route. You could of course use back here if you wanted to. And we're gonna say with info status posted if you want to. Okay, so let's check this out. Let's go ahead and say, hi everyone. Hit update status. Uh, okay, so we've got a import error, so auth can't be found, obviously. So let's go ahead and import this facade. There we go, so we can use it here. Let's go ahead and try this again. Hi, everyone. There we go, so status posted. We can't see it at the moment, but if we refresh our database table, you can see in there a user ID of one. It's automatically uh, you know, detected that and related that to, the, to my user account. And we have the body Hell, hi everyone. So next we're going to look at outputting the statuses on the home page here and that includes our own and our friends statuses. So we're going to be using our other browser to post some more statuses and then we can uh, see them all appear in the same list.